How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video we're going to set up the TD4550DNWB also known as the Brother TD4D Thermal Label Printer. We're gonna be primarily setting this up for four by six shipping labels that you're gonna be using for like eBay, Amazon, Etsy, Pirate Ship, or whatever platform that you're using. And we're gonna be setting it up on a Windows computer, specifically Windows 10, but if you have a different Windows system, it should be perfectly fine. We're gonna set the printer up, we're gonna connect it to our network wirelessly, and then we will install the drivers on the computer. I really hope this tutorial helps you if you have this printer. The instructions from the printer companies really aren't that good, so it should help smooth out any hiccups. And if at any point you have any questions, Put them in the comments section. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing and let's get into the setup and into the rest of the tutorial. So here is our printer. First thing we're going to need to do is set it up and calibrate it, get our media loaded into the printer. And when I say media, I don't mean CDs, DVDs, and games. I mean labels. They call this media in printer world, so. Media. We have a nice screen here that we're going to be navigating through menus with all these buttons up here. Power, feed, menu, back menu, up, down, okay. All these are ne menu navigation buttons. So we're gonna plug it in. You're gonna take your power supply, plug in your power cable. This is plugged into the wall right now. Plug that into your power supply. Plug your power supply into the back of your printer and you're going to turn your printer on. It does like a little blink thing. We're gonna turn it on hold that power button and it will initialize. And the first thing it's going to ask us is for our set language. So put it in whatever language you want. We're using English here in the United States. So we're gonna hit okay. And now the printer is in ready status, except for there is no media, there is no label. So we're going to press these little levers right here, open it up and we're going to load some media. I'm gonna show you two different label sizes and how to calibrate it and then what else you can kind of do with the media. Um, I have right here, this is a three inch core, which I got for free from ups.com. Normally it's a lot thicker, but this is low enough to where I can just set this in here and then I can close the top of the printer. You also can, you also can feed fan folded labels through the back right here. That would look something like this, this on a spool, or you could just have the fan fold labels in a box. You would feed it through the back, kind of like that. Uh, then you would use this wheel here to open it to the width of your labels, something like that. And then you would be able to feed the labels through the back of the printer that way. I like to have my labels inside my printer, so I'm just going to put these in like that and close the top. So anytime you open or close it, it'll go to this media menu. If you don't do anything, it'll time out and just go back to ready status. But if you hit okay and then press down to calibration and then hit okay, it's going to calibrate the printer automatically. It's going to use these sensors in here, read in between the labels with some infrared or whatever to read the distance between the labels and to figure out your label size. So I'm gonna hit okay on calibration so we are on media calibration, I'm gonna hit okay. And the printer spits out two labels and then it says four by six die cut labels. It already knows what we have. Then I can open this up, roll it back, and then it's gonna say media again, but it already has calibrated for four by six, so we're good to go. If at any time you change labels, like we're going to do right here, you always wanna make sure the label surface is facing up because the thermal print head is on the top of the printer. So these labels that I have right here, I actually have to install them like this. Close this thing with the wheel, kind of like that. And then I can close the top here. It's gonna ask me to calibrate again. Then I have to go down to calibration, hit okay and spit out three labels and it says they're two and a half by one inch die cut labels. If I hit the feed button, it'll feed one label just like that and it is calibrated for this. And for this tutorial, we're actually gonna be using shipping labels. That's what most people are gonna be using, but I did wanna show you anytime you change label size, how you calibrate and it's just that easy. 
Now that your media is loaded, your labels are loaded, your printer is calibrated, you're going to want to get it on your wireless network. I'm gonna show you three ways how to do it. First is using WPS push button, that's the easiest. Second is we're going to find our wireless network using our screen here, type in our password manually and get it to connect to the wireless. And third, if all else fails, can plug in an ethernet cord in the back and then plug the other end of it into your wireless router and you can network your printer that way, but you have to have it close to the router. So it's technically not wireless, but it is networked. So first we're gonna do WPS push button, which is the easiest way to do it. You're gonna hit menu here. We're going to navigate with these down arrow key down to WLAN. It's the menu six out of eight. We're gonna hit okay. You're going to go to WLAN on off. We're gonna turn it on because it defaults to off. And then we're gonna go back to WLAN. I'm gonna hit okay. Then we're gonna go down to WPS push button. I'm gonna hit okay. Uh, I'm gonna press up to get to start. And then I'm going to hit okay. Start WPS on your wireless router slash access point. I'm gonna hit okay. And it says setting up WPS right there. So while that's looking for an open WPS, we're gonna go to our router and your router must have a WPS button for this. I have one right here. I'm going to hold that down until my light in the front starts blinking. This light is blinking. Your router might have a WPS LED. It might have something a little bit different than what I have, but for the reference of this video, I am using an Asus RTAC68U router. Okay, so we have a connected exclamation point. Setting this on WPS and then allowing WPS on our router has connected them without having to type anything in. And as you can see, if we go back to the menu, we have a wireless signal right there and we are on our network. If for some reason WPS doesn't work for you, you can try the second method that I'm about to show you. The second way to connect this to your Wi-Fi router, we're gonna hit menu. We're gonna go down to y, uh, WLAN. We're gonna hit okay. You're gonna wanna make sure your WLAN is on. Then you're gonna hit okay to select WLAN again. You're gonna use the down navigation to navigate down to infra manual setup. I think infrastructure manual setup, you're gonna hit okay. And now the printer is searching for wireless networks around it. Now that might take 10 to 20 seconds for it to find all the networks. Okay. So now it's got a list of SSIDs, which are the networks that it's picking up. And you have to scroll up or down to find your wireless network. You may have two wireless networks and I would recommend getting on the 5G one if you can if you have a 5G network at your house. So we're gonna get on ours, it's Spearsy Town 5G, and then I'm gonna hit okay. And here it's asking me to input the password. This is kind of a pain in the butt. This menu button toggles capital, lowercase, numbers and signs, and then you use up and down to input each character. My password is year of the pig. So I will put that in right now. Every character, you're gonna input it using up and down and menu to change between capital, lowercase, numbers, and signs. And then each character, you're gonna to have to hit okay and then go to the next character. And it is a pain, but it must be done if your WPS is not working. So bear with me while I put this in. Okay, I put it all the way in. It doesn't fit all on the screen. And then I'm going to hit OK to finish. It says my password is Year of the Pig right there. I'm gonna hit OK one more time. And that let the printer know what network it needs to connect to and what the password for that network is so it can connect. It said connected. Now we have our wireless signal right there and our printer is on our network. Third way, if neither of those wireless ways work, you're going to want to take an ethernet cable plug it into the back of your printer, plug the other end into an open port on your router, and your router should have a light on whatever port you plugged it into. See how that says port four is blinking, data is transmitting. I plugged it into port four, we're connected, 
and the printer should be found from the iPad. So after your printer is connected to your network, you're going to want to go to your computer and make sure that you are connected to the same network, Jersey Town 5G. That's what I'm connected to. Otherwise, this is not going to work. We are not plugging the printer in. We are going to connect to it completely wirelessly through the network. That's one of the features why this printer is so expensive because it can be networked to multiple computers and print wirelessly from those computers. First thing you're going to need to do is download the Brother driver. It's from the Brother website. I will put a link to it in the description. I will put a link to it in the description. Makes it a little bit easier to find. We're on a TD 4D series. Right there is our printer downloads and we're gonna be downloading for Windows. So this is where the link in the description should take you to. You're going to pick your Windows operating system. I'm on Windows 10 64 bit. If you don't know your Windows operating system, you're gonna to need to go to this PC or my computer, right click on something, just like any blank part here, go to properties, and then it should tell you your operating system right here. Windows 10 and I am a 64-bit operating system. I'm gonna hit okay, then we're going to go down here to printer driver. We're going to download it in English, American English. I don't know why they have to. End user license agreement. So we're going to hit agree and then it should start downloading after that. There we go down here. 33.4 megabytes. You can navigate to your downloads folder or just click down here on your browser to open that file. And it's popping up asking me if it wants me to allow to make changes to this device. And I'm going to hit yes. It doesn't show on the video for whatever reason. And now it's running the driver install shield. Okay, so it's, here's another end user license agreement. We're gonna hit agree. Then we're going to pick our printer. We have the 4550 DNWB. If for some reason you have another TD model, you would be picking whatever it is there, but you don't have a tutorial on it. You only have the tutorial for this one. So if you have one of these other models, just pick one of those. Okay. And now it's where you pick how you're gonna be connecting it. See, we're not using USB. If you were, you would plug it in via USB, but you really don't need to because this is a expensive wireless printer. You could have installed it via ethernet as you saw earlier in the video, but we are going to be installing it via wireless network. And we're just gonna hit that little button and then hit next. Now it's going, please wait. The installer's doing something. I think it's looking for the printer. So it found this printer on our network. As it should, I'm going to hit next. And now it's going to install the printer, configure the printer, do whatever it's gotta do. It's asking me to automatically close applications, restart them, yes, okay. Installation complete, hit finish. And your printer should be good to go. I'm going to open up a uh, sample label. I have one at fulfilledmerchant.com. I will put a link to this in the description as well. It's a sample label, four by six shipping label that I'm going to send to the printer. So you can go over here to print. You wanna make sure that you pick the right printer. So Seymour Brother TD4550 DNWB. Uh, it, it picked four by six automatically. If for some reason yours doesn't, you're gonna wanna change it to four by six and then you're going to hit print. And just like that, the printer is installed and prints a beautiful sample label. And if you haven't already liked the video or subscribed or clicked the bell, you can do so now as it says on this label. Okay, before we go, it's still good to know how to get to the printer settings. You're gonna go down here and type in printer and go to printer and scanners and you should find your printer right there. If you want to change settings, you go to manage printing preferences. That opens up all of these different settings. So you can change the paper size, you can change brightness and contrast, change the dithering and the halftone. Most of that you're probably not gonna mess with other than maybe the paper size, but that's how you get to it, just in case you need to know. Do remember, in order to get your labels in four by six format from eBay or Etsy or Amazon, 
there are settings in that platform. I will put a link to that video in the description. You must watch that. Otherwise, you're going to be frustrated when you don't have the right format that you're sending to your printer. It's super duper frustrating. It's totally a pain if you don't have the right settings. Make sure you check that video out. One more way I'm going to show you how to print on Windows, and that is via Bluetooth. So in order to get this on Bluetooth, we're going to have to turn Bluetooth on on the printer. It doesn't ship with Bluetooth turned on. It's something you have to go into. And the way that we do that was we hit menu. We go down, 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 down one more to Bluetooth setting. We're going to hit OK. Bluetooth mode on off. We're going to hit OK. We're going to press up or down to highlight on. You're going to hit OK and that's going to turn Bluetooth on. If we go back, you can see this little Bluetooth icon here, it means that Bluetooth is on and it is emitting the Bluetooth signal that we can connect to it from our computer. And then I'm going to disconnect from the Wi-Fi to show you that we are indeed connected via Bluetooth. So we disconnected from the Wi-Fi. I'm gonna type in Bluetooth down here go to Bluetooth and other device settings, add Bluetooth or other device, mice, keyboards, pens, audio, and now it's searching for devices. Comes up with two right here. I'm gonna click the one with the shape of the printer and it should connect, connect. It says your device is ready to go. Let's see if we're gonna go back to printer and scanners and settings we have this one is a copy one so this one is actually the bluetooth so i'm going to i'm going to rename this it's called copy one but i'm just going to call it bluetooth okay so it did change the name to bluetooth and now I'm going to print that sample label again to show you that it is actually sending it through Bluetooth. So we're going to pick now the Bluetooth printer. So if you're printing from the network, you're gonna print, pick the network printer, but if you're printing from Bluetooth, you're gonna install it like that. And we're gonna hit print. It should send our signal to our printer. There we go. And we printed a label via Bluetooth. You cannot do this on Mac. For whatever reason, it only works on Windows. If you do want to check out the Mac tutorial where I show you how to set it up on Mac and iPhone and iPads, there will be a link to that in the description as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you have any questions about this printer, put them in the comment section. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.